a fresh modern day take on Jurassic Park. Hey everyone, Mike here with Prehistoric Magazine. Now before we get into this video, just a quick reminder that my books, my prehistoric thriller novels, I'd love for you to be able to check them out at the Amazon link down below in the comment section. Currently this channel is not monetized, so I'm trying to be creative in how I come up with some money for this channel in order to put forth for new gear, just keep it running, artwork, and if you'd like to take a look at one of my videos, they're down below. It's always been my goal to get one turned into a movie. I have not done that, but in order to do that, I got to sell a lot more books. So I've had success, about 30,000 books sold, but love to have you check out one of my prehistoric thriller novels down below if this is your type of thing. Now, to the topic of this video, recently I became aware of a new video done by a YouTube channel giving Jurassic Park, primarily the Velociraptors, an updated you know, look for 2025. And this is pretty cool. Now, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it down in the comment section down below. And if you don't know the story about Jurassic Park with the Velociraptors and the Deinonychus, it's kind of an interesting story. If you do, bear with me. If you don't, this is kind of cool stuff. You know, Michael Crichton, you know, my hero to this day, my, my literary hero to this day, Michael Crichton, RIP to him, miss him very much. When he was writing Jurassic Park, he based his Velociraptors on Deinonychus, uh, more specifically paleontologist John Ostrom's study of Deinonychus. And he based all their features, their size, just everything about them on, you know, the small predatory dinosaur that we know as Deinonychus. And at the very last second, when it came time for publication, he decided to switch the name and go with Velociraptor. Now, I don't know this for a fact, but I have to believe somewhere that that must have just crushed John Ostrom. You know, you think about it, that's his life's work. He basically dedicated his life to studying Deinonychus, and he must have been tickled beyond death that a writer like Michael Crichton had contacted him, wanted to know about his work everything he'd done and then at the last second you know decided to name the animal velociraptor an animal vastly smaller than deinonychus now recently we got a new updated look for jurassic park by a youtube channel who decided to replace the velociraptors with deinonychus and i'm really curious what you all have to think on that i think it's pretty damn cool i have to say so myself you know, we get the kitchen scene with Tim and Lex when they're fleeing the raptors and it puts its snout through the round kitchen window in the door and kind of blows that steam from its nostrils into it. When the two dinosaurs come into the frame, come into the camera, we see them as fully black feathered Deinonychus. Again, pretty damn cool in my opinion. Really cool to get this updated take. I guess I always want to ask around, you know, when I see someone take that plunge with feathers do we think it was to that extent you know where it almost i know it's going to sound silly but almost looks like a like a just oversized raven or something you know always want to know do we think we know that they had feathers like an animal like Deinonychus, but how many feathers do we know and to what extent and i'm curious what you all think of the video down below in the comment section if you haven't watched it Please take a moment to watch it. It's only a couple minutes long. But whoever did it was very detail-oriented, obviously spared no expense, and just gave a modern, updated take on Jurassic Park and, you know, made it accurate and went back to the origins of what Crichton used as his basis for the Velociraptors, which was all the features of Deinonychus. You know, and Deinonychus was not a small animal. 130 to 220 pounds so if we think about a 200 pound animal we're talking about maybe a leopard something like that you know that's a big animal sure we're not talking about a lion we're not talking about a male lion or a bengal tiger but this is nothing to mess with and this animal would have been vastly more terrifying than velociraptor no respect to velociraptor i think velociraptors were you know, very successful predators in their own right. And all you can be is what you are, what you are created. You cannot be something else. 
And most importantly, we don't really need to think about, even though I do like battles, like who would win in a battle between Deinonychus and Velociraptor? All we need to know is Deinonychus was a top predator in its environment, and Velociraptor was probably a highly successful predator in its environment, in its specific niche. And both of them were good for their time and day when they lived and the prey that they fed on. But again, really curious to hear your thoughts on this new and updated take down below in the comments section of this video. Again, this is a full-on owning it to the fullest, full dark black feathers, a beautiful Deinonychus. You know, you could make the case in point that they're even more terrifying. I mean, I know that the, that the first Jurassic Park movie is inherently flawed. It has, obviously, not everything is 100% accurate. It's over 30 years old now, but, you know, it's still a timeless classic. And to this day, my favorite movie is Jurassic Park, and my favorite book is Jurassic Park. So you know where I stand on this. But, again, that's not to say that there's not room for updating and making these updates and just giving a, a new and fresh feel to it. So who knows? Maybe this individual was really inspired by Prehistoric Planet, the work that they've done, which is phenomenal. Really kind of frustrated that we don't know anything about Prehistoric Planet 3 yet, hoping we still get that season. But maybe this person was inspired by their work, Prehistoric Planet 1 and 2. Now, this brings me to another issue, which is, you know, in Jurassic World, Dominion, we get our first view of the Pyroraptor. Now, I find the franchise a little funny because they went through that extensive work of making Pyroraptor heavily feathered and trying to make it accurate. But when it came time to its size, they decided to scale it way up, vastly larger than it would have been in real life. Again, they chose the word Pyroraptor Probably because it just sounds explosive, you know, pyro raptor. It's almost like Dr. Sattler says in the movie, you chose this vegetation because it's beautiful, but they will defend themselves. So we know that Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, we know that they believe heavily in branding and they'll go with whatever sounds best. Pyro raptor does have an, it feels explosive, you know, but. Obviously, the animal was nowhere near the size that they portrayed it. So I do find it a little ironic. They went through all this extensive work, get it heavily feathered to be that accurate on that end of things, but then to decide to just completely make it as big as they want. Again, another minor complaint where I would have said, why don't we just pick an animal that is the size that you're needing? I think Utah Raptor has always been a great candidate to be in that franchise, never made an appearance. Um, I think Mega Raptor has always been a great candidate to be in that franchise, never made an appearance. Both of those animals may have been able to replace the Indoraptor in Fallen Kingdom. You know, so that's just my take on things. If you need an animal to a certain size, the fossil record of what we have right now will provide. You don't need to you know, make it accurate with feathers, but then decide to make it as big as you want only because you like the name. So that's kind of my little rant on things. Really, the purpose of this video is to make you aware, if you haven't seen it already, of this amazing footage that this individual did for a new and updated kitchen scene of Tim and Lex running from two Deinonychus, not two Velociraptors, but two Deinonychus. Love to hear your thoughts on this new emerging image and video that we have on the comments section down below. Definitely appreciate the support. And if you get a chance, be sure to check out my prehistoric thriller books also down in the comments section down below. Take care. See you in the next video.